so um, the next session will be by uh, mr binay lohani and on the, the topic will be scalar uh, transport foam uh, but uh, he is there but uh, we will be playing a video that he has recorded because uh, he was not sure about his presence during this time of the uh, workshop so abushan could you please play it and i hope binay is there so if you have any questions he can answer yes ma'am Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the FOSI team for organizing this workshop on open form and inviting me to conduct uh, this session on scalar transport form. I'm Binayak Lohani. I'm currently pursuing aerospace engineering at Pulso campus in Nepal. Uh, I'm also a technical contributor at FOSI. Uh, talking about my past experience with FOSI, it's been really wonderful. Uh, I did my previous internship at FOSI where I used the um open form to conduct cft analysis uh, so my work also got accepted and i presented my work at fluid mechanics and fluid power conference uh, so i'm very grateful to the to the fossi team uh, since then i have been using open form to conduct uh, several cft analysis and uh, two of my case studies have been published in the cft fossi website as well so you can check out my work there too uh so let's quickly move towards uh, today's session on scalar transport form so this is the outline of uh, today's talk uh, first of all we'll see how a scalar transport form uh, transport equation looks like uh, then we'll see a scalar transport form solver in open form then we'll talk about the limitations of this solver and see how we can modify this solver to incorporate the limitations that we have here and also see one example for this Uh, so this is the scalar transport equation. It's also known as the convective diffusive equation. Uh, here, key is the scalar term. Uh, the first term is the unsteady term. Uh, the second term is the convective term. Here, u u i is the velocity field. The third term is the diffusive term, where d f is the diffusivity constant. So the diffusivity constant uh, d is the uh, the molecular diffusivity. And uh, nu t and the ratio of nu t and s c t is the turbulent uh, diffusivity. Uh, okay, so nu t is the turbulent viscosity and s c t is the schemate number. So schemate number is a constant. We have to pick a particular value uh, to get a, uh, to solve for this case. The last term is the source term, and uh, combining all these uh, four terms uh, gives the scalar transport equation. So the scalar transport form is a basic solver that resolves the convection diffusion tra scalar transport equation using a user specified stationary velocity field. So a user specified stationary velocity field is needed because in the previous uh, equation we saw the velocity field. Uh, we do not solve for the velocity field here, but we it's ne it needs to be specified and it's stationary throughout the simulation. Okay. uh we'll further talk about this point uh, uh later also so remember this point uh the second point is it uh, uh, it's transient and uh, incompressible solver uh the scalar term is passive uh so the passive scalar means that it does not influence the fluid properties for example the viscosity or the density of the fluid Uh, next uh, we talk about we'll see how the scalar transport form code is coded in the open form uh, this is a simple c++ syntax uh, um, so below one is the actual equation and um, it's coded in this fashion so the unsteady term is ddtk um, and the convective term is the and divergence of phi k where phi is the flux uh, so the third term is the laplacian ddtk so this negative sign it is is because this term comes to the left hand side mm. and the last term is the fp modulus dot source k this is the source term so we'll see how the case is set up in open form for uh, this solver uh, we only have uh, one case which daily case uh, in the tutorials and the folder is present in this directory inside form tutorials basic scalar transport form pitch daily okay so as we have already known that open form files con fol folder contains three sub folders a uh, zero constant and system uh, inside the zero folder we have uh, to define the initial and boundary conditions uh, so 
here in this case we have t and u here t is used um, instead of k uh, in the previous um, equation we have seen k as the scalar but here t is used as a scalar it's just an indication uh, particularly here t is the temperature so temperature is also a passive scalar term and uh, u is the velocity field so we define the initial and boundary conditions in this case uh, inside the constant folder we have the transport properties file so in the transport properties file we have to define the mm, the constant parameters so in this case the only constant parameter is the diffusivity constant okay so since temperature is used here the diffusivity constant is um, can be referred to as the thermal diffusivity term so we define that here and inside the system folder we have three files control deck, FB schemes, and FB solution. So all these files um, are used uh, to define the time control and the discretization schemes, the algorithms that are used to you know, solve for the, for the scalar transport equations are defined uh, in these files, okay? We'll see this one by one uh, uh, later. So this is how the case looks like. Uh, it's a 2D case um, and this, uh, sort of geometry is also known as the backward facing step. So this is the inlet, um, this part only, and this is the step. Okay, these all are the walls. Let us start the walls, and this is the outlet. So what happens is the flow from the inlet will recirculate in this, uh, behind this step, and flows towards the outlet. So that's why it's called the backward facing step also. It's a 2D case. So we have to predefine the velocity field here, now, it remains constant throughout the simulation uh, it does not change uh, the only thing that changes is the scalar term uh, scalar term t that is evolved from inlet to outlet but velocity field remains constant it's already defined in the zero folder okay we'll see this next the passive scalar t field uh, in the initial time step at zero second uh, t uh, it's defined as one at the inlet only okay this is initial um, condition uh, so it's one in the inlet only and at all other places it's zero okay you can see here from the color bar also and this is the last time step the right hand side is the last time step so we can see here at last time step how the uh, scalar term t evolves uh, or gets transported towards the outlet okay in this fashion it's transported uh, later on we'll see the animation um, now we will uh, do so one hands-on session uh, to run these cases. It's a simple case. Um, now, so I'll request uh, all of you to please open your terminal. It can be, um, I, you might be using uh, Ubuntu or WSL, it doesn't matter. For now, I'm using WSL. Okay, so we have to copy the folders, uh, this folder, as I have already shown where the folder is present. So we have to copy this folder in the present directory. To do this, please follow my command. Uh, it's pretty simple case. So please type cp minus r after you. Then uh, please type this. Uh, the code is case sensitive. So uh, please take care of the upper and lower case alphabets. So form tutorials slash um, basic then after that scalar transport t capital transport and form f capital then it's tally so after writing this command then we have press in press space then press full stop so full stop meaning that we have copied the folder from uh, this this location to the present location uh, present location is indicated by this dot okay so after typing this command please type this command all of you uh, and then we can type enter so after this we can list the present directory and you can see paste daily is present here okay so all of you please uh, write this command and press enter so now we can move into the this daily case 
it's daily case. So now, if we list it, uh, we can see the zero constant and system folder present here. The all run file, all run uh, file is mm, used when we have to run all the commands all at once. So we'll see this later. First of all, let's see the zero for folder. Uh, so inside the zero folder, we see the T and U files. So one by one, let's see how it how the boundary conditions are defined here. So I use a notepad as a text editor. You might use um, any text editor of your choice. To, so to use the notepad, uh, you uh, please type notepad.exe, then type T to see the files of T. So the boundary conditions for the scalar term T is given here in the boundary field. Uh, as we already, as I already showed you that uh, in the T uh, is defined as one at the inlet and at all the all other places outlet upper wall and lower wall it's zero gradient so if uh, considering a t as temperature uh, the zero gradient means that it's the adiabatic condition okay and for the front and back uh, it's empty because it's a 2d case so now uh, let's see the velocity field okay now velocity field Mm, as I already told you that velocity, we don't solve for velocity, but uh, we have to predefine the, uh, the initial conditions uh, for all the cells in the domain. Okay, so this internal field are all the internal cells. Uh, so we have to define it as a vector in X, Y and Z direction since velocity is a vector. And uh, we have a long list here uh, for individual cells of the pitch daily case. Okay. And at last, we have the boundary conditions as well. So at the boundary conditions, inlet is 10 meters per second in the x direction. Outlet is zero gradient. And at wall, it is no slip condition. OK, so here we have to define that in boundaries also and also at the internal cells. OK, so after this, let's move on to the constant folder. So to move backwards of this case, since we are in the zero, um, uh, zero folder now uh, we have to move one step backwards so we have to click cd double dot press enter and then we'll move backwards and list uh, we have let's move into the constant folder cd constant so inside the constant folder we list it as transport properties is only present here to see the transport properties file we'll use notepad so notepad.exe then transport properties so if we see the contents here we only have dt this is the diffusivity term so since t is the uh, temperature here it's thermal diffusivity and the value is 0 0.01 okay so this square in the square bracket we have the dimensions uh, so and this is the thermal diffusivity uh, value so after this, let's see the system folder. System folder, we can see, type this command. Then we move to the system folder directory. Now uh, we, we can see that control dict FP schemes and FP solution. Inside the control dict file, let's move to the control dict. Control dict. Uh, now we can see the time control is present here. In the application, we have the name of the solver we are using, that is scalar transport form, and rest are the time control. For example, the start uh, start time is zero second, and stop time, this end time is 0 0.1 second. So this is the end time, and delta t is this. So the rest are the functions. So for example, write format, we can write it as ASCII or binary, and uh, rest are the functions that are required to run the case. Okay, after this, let's see FP schemes file. So, inside the FP schemes, we have uh, defined the discretization schemes for various terms. For example, the unsteady term for the unsteady term TDT schemes is used as Euler. So, we, as we know, Euler is a first order accurate term. So, we can increase the order of accuracy uh, to maybe second one. 
maybe a backward or crank nicholson so uh, we have mm, we can use that also so uh, we have to take care of the um, stability also if we want to increase the uh, order of accuracy so and gradient schemes is gauss linear divergent schemes is for phi t is gauss linear or point rat t so we can change this um, input also but we have to take care uh, take this value carefully okay uh, it also depends on case by case basis now next uh, we'll see the fp solution file F inside the fp solution file we have to define the solvers that i uh, used to so iteratively solve the t or the passive scalar term so the solver uh, name is pbic is step preconditioner is used and the tolerance is given and the relative tolerance is also zero so now these are the input that are necessary to run the cases and simple algorithm is used to uh, solve the transport equation okay so uh, these are all the uh, files present here in the system folder we have we should have extra um, file also to uh, run the uh, mess so we don't have it here but if we look at the uh, all run um, all run file all run sorry uh, if we look at the all run file uh, you can see here uh, these are the commands that will be run if we run directly with the all run file uh, we need to find the block mesh file also so the block mesh stick file is present in some other uh, directory uh, form tutorials resources block mesh uh, block mesh basically so um, in this case uh, we can run this whole command all at once so that the uh, block mesh stick file will be copied uh, will be run in this current directory okay so if i run this file uh, run this command then block mesh uh, dict file will be run since it's present in some uh, other location okay it's not present here it doesn't matter much we can copy here also so if we press now enter we'll run the block mesh file okay now mesh is uh, already generated for here now next command we only have two commands the next command is a name of the solver so the name of the solver is scalar transport form so if we hit this press enter we will run this case so here we can see we are only solving for t we are not solving for u we are not solving for p uh, velocity or pressure so we are only solving for t uh, velocity remains constant so the end time step is 0 0.1 second so it's completed now so end time we are only solving for t uh, to see the results as we have already seen some of the results in the uh, slides also uh, we can see the results in para form i'll show you the animation hmm. now it's done uh, okay in the para form i think you don't need to run this i will just show you quickly so this is the pitch daily case and um, if you want to see the first of all the velocity u field so it uh, okay, velocity U fail. It remains constant throughout. This is time zero second. But if I run this um, animate button, it doesn't change. Okay, it remains constant throughout as we are not solving for velocity. I already told you that. But if let's move to the zero second also now. Now if we see for this T file, it's um, one at the inlet and zero at all the places in zero time. Okay, zero second. Now, if I uh, click on play, you can see the animation. Okay, how it is transported. So you can see how this T is transported in the domain. So it's ready now, but we need to scale it to see completely. If we scale it, this is the final time step at 0 0.1 second. Now we can see at how this scalar field is transported in time in this uh, domain. So this is a simple example. You can run this on your own and see how the result changes. Uh, now we'll see the limitations of this solver in the slides. Sure. To see a, talk about the limitations. Uh, the an option to solve for the flow coupled with the scalar transport is not available. So we cannot uh, solve for the flow. That is the velocity and pressure. 
we only solve for the scalar transport that is t in the previous example okay so that's one limitation now the diffusion coefficient is assumed to be a constant scalar so it's a constant scalar here we cannot change this so there are two limitations the first one is Navier-Stokes equations cannot be solved along with scalar transport equation and second is diffusion coefficient is constant so to overcome the limitations of scalar transport form uh, the transport equation can be coded inside solvers inside other solvers like simple form simple form that is steady state and ICO or PSO or pimple form that is transient solutions okay so uh, we can code the scalar transport equation into some other solvers so uh, why do you need to do, do this because uh, we might need to uh, simultaneously solve for uh, pressure and velocity using Navier-Stokes equation and also want to solve for the scalar transport equation also so for example uh, in the polluting dispersion flow in an urban flow setup we can consider concentration of pollutants okay concentration of pollutants as a passive scalar quantity and simultaneously we want to solve for pressure and velocity field also so in such cases we might need scalar transport form combined with other solvers like simple form pimple form piece form etc okay uh, we'll see it. this is a basic uh, introduction to such cases uh, we'll see examples of this uh, in the later session uh, where uh, uh, Mr. Krishna Kant uh, sir, will uh, help with the ICO form solver uh, coded with a scalar transport form. Okay, and the next session. Okay, so this is how the code looks like for a scalar transport equation uh, merged with a simple form. So uh, while the simple form solver is running, uh, we incorporate this uh, scalar transport equation um, in this fashion. Uh, so it's a simple case, simple way to uh, illustrate such cases, and we define this uh, molecular. Uh, we define this diffusivity constant in this way. A decay is the molecular diffusivity plus uh, nu t uh, and schematic number. Okay, this is the ratio. So uh, we can use this uh, code. So talking about the example, uh, this is a street canyon setup. So uh, for context, a street canyon setup uh, is a place where there is a narrow road, narrow road on either side of tall buildings. So th on either side, there are tall uh, buildings and there is a narrow road between it. So in this case, what happens is when the mean wind direction is perpendicular to the street or road. So this is the 2D view or cross section of this case. So when mean wind is perpendicular, then what happens is recirculation region will be happening here uh, forming the primary vortex so when the pollutants um, from the vehicles escape from these vehicles and it gets trapped inside this region only okay uh, it revolves around this region only from in the primary vortex region but cannot escape outside of this region so this creates a problem of pollution so pollution will be Mm, increased so much that um, uh, it's one of the major problem of the urban city so for such cases we can uh, optimize optimize the shape of the buildings uh, do that sort of analysis um, using CFT using such solvers okay using merged uh, solvers of simple form and scalar transport equation and the uh, uh, pollutants can be can be considered as the uh, passive scalar term so uh, with a similar intention this is one example where scalar transport equation is used in simple form so this is the domain where pink blocks are the buildings okay are the buildings and this, between these buildings is the pollutant line sources so we consider these line sources as the passive scalar term then we also need to uh, see the pressure and velocity equation and solve for it uh, the velocity will be from x uh, along the x direction so that uh, it is perpendicular to the street so here is the result okay this is the cross-sectional view this first one is the velocity contour plot uh, you can see the velocity along the x direction it looks like this and the next one is interesting one uh, this c is the mm, pollutant concentration okay 
So this from the line sources, we can see how this uh, passive scalar term uh, pollutant concentration evolves. Mm -hmm. And we can see that it is unable to escape out of this uh, urban canyon setup. So we can optimize the shape of the buildings or roof so that um, these pollutants can escape out and does not have the problem of uh, pollution. So that's the one main objective for this case. So for the quotes uh, and the similar case study that is used here, you can go on to this um, link below where uh, uh, we have this, uh, the quotes that uh, most um, solver, but the case study is different. Here the case study is that um, we have a isolated building where the pollutant sources are these red blocks, red four blocks. So when the flow is along the X direction here, uh, along with the flow, uh, the, this pollutant uh, sources also disperses. Okay, to see how is it is dispersed and uh, along with the flow, uh, we are using this um, setup. So this is the setup from Zval A15 building, Longo et al. 2019 from the wind tunnel experiment. So you can go on this link. Um, the name of the case study is uh, Polyton Dispersion Modeling Using CFD, a walkthrough of solver development in open form. So this is developed by me. Uh, you can go through this. And uh, if you have any doubts, uh, any questions, you can contact me um, on this email, contact CFD at fossi.in, indicating my name. Uh, so I'll be happy to help uh, if no, you have any doubts about it. So that's it for today's session for me. Uh, thank you for being a wonderful audience. Thank you. Thank you all of you. Uh, I would like to know if you have any questions about this session. Uh, I think most of you are wondering the, how the velocity field uh, uh, will come out of, uh, uh, so how we'll get the velocity data to run the scalar transport form solver. So for that, uh, first of all, you will need to uh, solve using another solver, for example, simple form or potential form uh, without any scalar term in it, okay? It's a simple steady state case. First you run that uh, with the same geometry, then um, extract the data from your last time steps and put that uh, in your initial conditions in the, uh, uh, in the next simulation that you want to run. So that's how you will get that. Okay, and for the next case that I that we discussed now uh, for the merge solver, you don't need to do that. Uh, we'll simultaneously run both the equations. So that's one advantage of the uh, the later version of merge uh, code that we used. So any other questions you can ask now, or you can also contact by email. So Avin here was asking why internal field for T is zero. Uh, so in the previous session, I had told that internal field must for temperature must be greater than zero. Uh, in that uh, case, like in previous case, we were actually solving the energy equation uh, that involved temperature. But here we are not solving energy equation. Temperature is just a, a scalar property, or a scalar parameter that is being transported uh, with the F velocity. So in this case, we need not need to be worried about that. Uh, Rajnes uh, was asking, uh, what if we have analytical solutions for velocity? So in that case, I think uh, you, you might um, have uh, analytical solutions at the inlet. So you need to uh, use the coded uh, uh, boundary condition for that to, and use the uh, you know, Mars uh, solver uh, to solve this problem, okay? Another question from Chintak Bina in the chat box. So if there are more than one scalar transport, yeah, you can use the, uh, you can solve using scalar transport form or uh, the Mars solver if you have more than one. So you need to define more than one uh, separate, uh, you need to define the passive scalar separately with, separately with separate name for that case. Okay, one more question in the chat box. So in the, okay, how does viscosity property is included in momentum? Okay, for the uh, MERS solver, we can uh, use viscosity also in the transport properties file. So in that case, uh, uh, we can incorporate the viscosity property also while uh, while we, we are solving the flow. It's not only for diffusion, there is convection also in the flow, in that case, convection or advection. Uh, inside constant folder in transport properties. So first case was only for uh, 
scalar transport foam, so there was no viscosity included. As we are not solving for uh, uh, Navier-Stokes equation or uh, momentum equation, but in the next case we are solving for velocity, pressure, and uh, transport equation all at once. So we we need to define uh, viscosity in uh, inside that folder. Okay, constant transport properties. Any other questions? Or I think we can move. I don't think they have any more questions. So we will take a break for lunch now.